Uh, Vanessa McMahon. The most reverend Vincent Nichols, Archbishop of Westminster, will say on Sunday that redefining marriage to include homosexuals would be a profoundly radical step, stripping it of its distinctive nature. Does the panel agree? This is in the context, of course, of the Prime Minister introducing a consultation process with a view to legalising um, gay marriage. Uh, Christina Rodoni. I do agree. Marriage works. It's good for children. Evidence clearly shows that children of married couples are less likely to drop out of school, are less likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, are less likely to end up in jail. Marriage helps the spouses as well because they are entitled to rights that cohabiting couples don't have, including pensions, including inheritance. Marriage even, according to David Cameron's own happiness survey, has been shown to make people happy. Heterosexual couples who are married turn out to be the happiest people in Britain. And what would be the uh, damaging impact of uh, saying that two men who love one another, who are, can now be in a civil partnership, could uh, be married well, precisely, in a civil it. service? If, if all of these benefits came at a cost, and that cost was injustice or unfairness, if the government were saying we only recognize the loving bond of, and commitment that two heterosexual people are capable of, then I would say, okay, let's strip, you know, let's rip this up. This is not fair. This is not just. Um, we must re revise the whole system. But what the government has done in the past, in fact, it wasn't this government, it was the last government, it has given the Civil Partnership Act, which gives gay couples the same right, once they're in a civil partnership, as married couples, uh, heterosexual married couples. So I say, given that 20,000 couples already enjoy these civil partnerships, is that not enough? Do we need to redefine an institution that works so well simply because there is a lobby, a gay marriage lobby, that wants to have an equal access to marriage? Jonathan Friedland. Well, I disagree with, with most of that. I mean, the question was, would it be radical and, uh, to make, take this step? And I would say it would be radical because equality is radical. It's a radical idea to treat people equally. And it would be a first, uh, which was also contained in the question, just as in South Africa or in the Deep South, it was a first and it was radical to say that interracial marriage was legal. At the time, in those societies, it was understood that marriage could only be between two people of the same race. And then once that rule was changed, it stopped even seeming radical. And in fact, people sort of marveled that they had ever thought that they could restrict access to marriage on those sorts of grounds. I do agree with Christina that marriage is a very good thing. Uh, I agree with her about the stability it affords for people in it and for the rest of society. But why on earth, if you believed that, would you limit access to it? Wouldn't you say, this is a good thing, it works, if these people are committed enough to want to get married, committed enough, in fact, to have a civil partnership, why on earth would you say, but they cannot, cannot have full access, they have instead to have some kind of second-class arrangement? The cardinal who uh, kicked this whole debate off when he said it would be a grotesque erosion of human rights uh, uh, to have gay marriage, I, I just would put the question to him, how on earth does it erode a human right uh, to make it available to more people? Uh, that just is extending a human right, not eroding it. So I think heterosexual marriage is strong enough, it's robust enough to cope with a few thousand gay couples also being married. Uh, it, makes, it will make no difference to the institution of marriage itself, except perhaps to widen it and therefore strengthen it. Christina, can I come back to... <laughs> back, back, back to you on this. There are, there are men in civil partnerships who also um, have children, Given what you say about stability and the upbringing of children, is there no strengthening of that bond through marriage for men, as you say there is for women? I think that what 
what we are arguing about here is what the logical consequence of the government, and this is where Vince Nichols is, is right when he uses the word radical. If what we have is a government saying marriage is now going to be extended to gay couples, and what we know that the gay marriage lobby wants is equality above all, when will the government be able to say to this lobby, equality, yes, but by the way, you won't be able to have it in church and you won't be able to have it in a synagogue because the priest and or the rabbi do not view this as part of their belief system. And so what we will have is a situation where freedom of conscience of the priest and of the rabbi who would be called upon to celebrate this union would be trampled. And the right yeah. of but, but a man and or a woman... Since you mentioned the example of, of, of a rabbi, so my wife and I were married by a rabbi. If one of us had not been Jewish, he would not have allowed us to be married. He would not have married us. But the state would have taken a different view. It would have said, one of you is Jewish, one of you isn't. You can have a civil marriage, no problem. Or if we you already were, or allow if you religion divorced. to take a different position. Yeah. Or if you were divorced, you know, if you're divorced, so if, you, if, you, if, if I was divorced and wanted to get remarried in a church, it would be for the church to decide whether I was allowed to get married in that church. And this happens all the time. And if you say I that marriage is, and I, you know, some people say marriage has to be about children, well, then what do we do about two people in their 60s wanting to get married? Well, they're clearly not going to have children. This is nonsense. Marriage is about love. And if, if people love each other, they should be allowed to marry each other. Marriage is about the institutionalization the of love and lust. And I think that what we're forgetting here is that if what, we, what the government is doing is opening marriage up equally for everyone, the logical conclusion will be that they will force those religious, those religious but well, institutions religious, but they don't force, to marry but people they don't force who, religious, for them, who for them but they don't force religious institutions to do that now. That's the, exa that's the point of the but example But that's because equality is not on the agenda. Equality of marriage is not on the agenda. Who wants equality of marriage? No, one, is, no one has mentioned it until now. Eric and Pickles, would you like your first. say? Well, uh, it would be nice, but I've, I've enjoyed that um, uh, very much. Uh, but I think it's got increasingly bizarre. From what I can really understand from Christina is saying is uh, what the government is proposing is kind of okay. But somewhere down the road that government will force churches and synagogues and mosques to do something different. It, that of is course they won't. Uh, the, 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 the state licensed marriages... Eric, the, when the... When the uh, when Christine, we, I've let, had let, to listen let, to you let, for Eric, quite some time. Point and then you can Maybe come back I in could again. just talk for 30 seconds and then you can tell me how wrong I am. Um, <laughs> but this is just a straightforward, civilised way for the state to say that if somebody, if two, if two couples of the same sex uh, want to, to be married, the state will uh, ensure that that is available. Uh, obviously so the what did the Civil Partnership no, no, Act I'm, do? I'm, I haven't had my 30 seconds yet. Let me have my 30 seconds. And a half. Let me have my 30 My word, just a couple Come on, get on with it. Get on with it. Uh, don't you start. <laughs> don't you start, no chance. What, what, what we're simply saying is not apply to churches. Churches can decide the, the, the process. As I said uh, somewhere else, I've changed my mind about this. I've seen um, uh, 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 gay couples uh, engaged in, uh, in uh, a civil partnership, and I do think it gave a, a degree of stability uh, to their relationship to one another. And if people are prepared uh, to, in good times and bads to look after one another... I think that's something that the state should provide. And I think it's actually a civilising, a moderating thing about Britain. And I think it makes Britain a better place by uh, allowing uh, and ensuring that we don't go through this rather silly fiction of pretending uh, that a civil partnership is anything different than a marriage. And I think the state should provide that. OK, I've got one, one more thing. Um, Christine, one, one more question to you. The, the, the former Archbishop... Carey talks about cultural vandalism were this to be permitted. Um, but in slightly differently, the Cardinal, Keith O'Brien, that uh, Jonathan Friedman referred to, said that, said that it would be sh the nations would be shaming themselves. It would be going against natural law. Do you share his view that it would be going against natural law? No, I think, I think actually heterosexual marriage is very, very unnatural. I think 
you know, by, by reining in our instincts, by, um, by forcing us to be charitable, patient, iron his shirts. Uh, I think that's pretty unnatural. So, um, so no, I'm afraid I don't okay. agree with C- Cardinal now O'Brien. We, okay, I'm going to go to our audience again. This is a, a, a Roman Catholic school, but the audience here comes from the community, from, as far as I know, all religions and maybe and often probably none as well. Who favours the idea of legalising homosexual marriage, gay marriage? Who favours that? Would you put your hands up? Those who are against? Well, it's pretty evenly balanced in this hall. Pretty evenly balanced. 